And today we are talking about building your coaching philosophy. This is a basketball coaching channel. So obviously we are going to focus on basketball, but I think a coaching philosophy can be taken from any sport and applied and utilized uh, at any level as well. So one of the things when I was first learning about the game of basketball and I'm still figuring out my coaching philosophy now. I have it pretty much nailed down of how I want my teams to play with certain tweaks here and there. But one of the biggest things for me was I really didn't have a coaching identity, as in I didn't know who I was as a coach. So I really kind of set out to figure out what worked as a coach, you know, what, what kind of coaches there are from a personality standpoint, what kind of coach I wanted to be. And the biggest thing I, I took away from it is you need to coach to your personality. And when I say that, I mean, if you are not an aggressive, up upbeat, you know, hard nosed, fiery person, and you try to coach that way, it will come off as fake. People will recognize that. For me, I'm not really that kind of person. I'm more of a calm, reserved type person. I also want my teams to kind of reflect that. I want them to play calm. I want them to play loose and not really worry about the mistakes per se. Uh, but I was never really like an in your face, you know, almost like a Tom Izzo type of coach. And I think the problem that we come across with is we have other coaches telling other coaches how they should or shouldn't coach based upon how what their personality is and what their how their coaching style is. And I think it's important as you're building your coaching philosophy to be authentic and recognize that there's, you know, a lot of ways to win a basketball game and a lot of ways to impact kids' lives as a coach. If that's your ultimate goal, just be authentic and be yourself. The next thing we're going to look at and think about is how you want to run your program. How you want, if you're the head coach, because that's what we're talking about is building your, your philosophy as a coach. When you become a head coach, you already have this built and you're ready to go. How do you want your program to run? And I personally have not run a basketball program, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on this because I don't feel like it would be appropriate. Uh, I would reach out to head coaches in the area, figure out some of their mistakes that they've made. Uh, they'll, they'll definitely help you with that. Uh, I've learned from a lot of coaches uh, running a program. But I think the biggest thing when you are running a program is a quote that I got from Jocko Willink from Extreme Ownership. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. If you want your team to be the hardest working defensive team, diving on every loose ball, going after every rebound, boxing out, doing the little things, but your best player scores 30 points a game and, and you kind of let him slide on that end, that's you tolerating that. So it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. That's the biggest thing I could take away from building a program for whenever I take over my first program, I'm going to be utilizing that. The next thing is your coaching style. Now this is going to be more of on court, how you want your teams to play. Do you want to play up tempo? Do you want to be patient? Do you want to be disciplined? Are you going to press? Are you going to play man to man defense? Are you going to play zone defense? Out of all of those, there's no right answer because it's just got to be what you believe in. If you watch the final four this year, we had Virginia, Texas Tech, both played a slower style offense. Virginia played a pack line defense where they basically forced the ball to the middle or influenced the ball to the middle. Texas Tech, they play a man-to-man -man pressure defense where they force the ball to the baseline. Both teams are in the final four. Michigan State, they'll run in transition in early offense, but then pull it back and run half-court sets. Auburn, same thing. Run as early as they can in transition offense, but then run half-court sets and, and motion offense. There's not really a right answer it's just whatever you believe in, and if you can teach that and get your kids to buy into that philosophy. So that's one thing you have to think about is what do you like? For up-tempo, do you want your team teams to play fast, loose, have fun? I think up-tempo, coaching up-tempo has been one of the best things I've made a change to and really allowing my teams to get out and play loose and free. Uh, it's fun to coach. It's fun to watch. If you're less skilled, you can get easier buckets in transition. There is more chances for turnovers. There's definitely some downsides to playing fast. You're going to make some mistakes, but it does maximize your potential for scoring. So I love playing up tempo for me as a coach. If you want to be patient and you want to slow the game down and you want to really kind of walk the ball up the court, control that tempo that way. You know, Virginia does that and they had number one offense in the NCAA this year. So it's just all about what you prefer. Now you could go more of a balanced route. 
so you could get you know first seven or eight seconds you can try and score an early offense and push the ball but then pull the ball back out and run a half court set run really good sets uh run a good motion offense it's just what you believe in but what you have to do is start thinking about why you're doing what you're doing so why are you why would you prefer to play an up-tempo style and why is it beneficial to you and then take notes and figure out what teams play that style watch you know auburn watch michigan state watch the teams that get out north carolina get out early in transition and say all right can i do what they're doing i'll tell you the answer is yes whatever team you watch you can do what they do it's just a matter of can you get your kids and your team to buy in what you're trying to get them to do the next question i would ask is offensively do you want to be a motion offense team or do you want to be a sets oriented team? Now you don't have to be either or you can run sets that flow into motion, but at the end of the day, you have to kind of choose what you're going to be about, right? You are what you emphasize. So if you run a lot of half court sets and have a lot of counters and you rep those every day in practice, you'll be effective at those in the game. If you run a motion offense and you drill that and rep that every day in practice, you'll be effective at that, but you can't do everything. So what you have to decide is what you're going to focus on, what you like to teach, right? If you can teach a motion offense and you found success with motion offense, high school level, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit harder at times just because you may, not, may only have kids for two years, but if you get your feeder programs running that same motion offense and you have that alignment, which we'll touch on after, uh, I think it's, it's something that can be really beneficial. Half court sets. I love running half court sets. I think they're extremely, extremely efficient. Uh, I love running counters. I don't like running a, uh, I don't have a huge playbook contrary to what everybody thinks I do. But what I do have is I have simple adjustments and counters built into like one base set. So let's say we have the one horn set. We can have 12 different counters out of that one action that allows us to basically counter whatever a defense is going to do. Uh, we run our baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds, and horn series all in the same. So we end up having 14 to 15 different plays, but there are actually only five plays where we can run in three different scenarios. But you can increase your playbook by doing simple things like that. Now, defensively, do you want to press? Do you want to press man-to-man? -man? Do you want to press zone? Are you trying to speed the other team up? Or are you trying to slow them down? Are you trying to make them think? Or are you trying to just, you know, hopefully they, you can get a couple cheap turnovers out of your press? Do you have the personnel to press? Well, everybody has a personnel to press. It's just about more conditioning, in my opinion. But are you, are you going to play man-to-man -man defense? Are you going to play zone defense? What are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, I don't like when people say zone defense is soft. Um, I think every coach has different philosophies, and that's part of this video. Uh, I don't think we should, as a coaching, as, a, as coaches, I don't think we should, you know, talk down on what another coach does or what the decisions they make, especially if they're working. You know, just because a coach plays a lot of zone defense doesn't mean they're a bad coach. I think at times other coaches tend to tend to say really bad things about zones and zone coaches. And sure, there's some downsides and and some some negatives that. I don't always agree with, but I don't think coaching zone makes you soft per se. And that's okay if you think that, but I just don't think that we should always express it so negatively towards other coaches because then we're not helping other people. We're just, you know, being negative. And if you play man to man, are you going to be pressure? Are you going to be pack line? Are you going to, you know, kind of sag off? Are you going to get, you know, get up into people with ball pressure and try to trap? Are you trying to speed the game up? Are you trying to contest threes? Are you giving up only mid range? There's a lot of things that you have to think about. And it's almost basically whatever you're watching, you just take notes on and figure out what you like and what you don't like. So that leads me to alignment. That this is, I think, is the biggest thing for a coach's philosophy is what you're doing on offense. Does it match up and mesh with what you're doing on defense? If you are running a, let's say, a patient offense and walking the ball up the court every time, you shouldn't be pressing and trying to trap and get the ball and, and, and create that as an up-tempo game. If you do want to press and you run a patient offense, having a soft zone to kind of slow the other team down to really make them think to control that tempo that way. So you just have to make sure whatever you're doing is going to work off of the other. For instance, if, if your goal is to have a really good transition defense, 
a lot of coaches emphasize transition defense. And I've talked to coaches that emphasize transition defense, but then on the offensive boards, they'll send four to the glass. No, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily mesh and make sense for transition defense. Typically speaking, if you want to have good transition transition defense, you send four back one to the boards or, or even no, you know nobody to the boards. The whole point of this is there are a lot of ways to win basketball games, to run a program, and to help teams get better. The only thing you have to do is decide what is right for you. Now let's talk about how you kind of grow and build your coaching philosophy. These are basically the two main things that I do while well, I'm still, I'm still con continuing to grow my philosophy, but especially four or five years ago when I was really trying to learn and had not really good grasp on what I wanted to do. Uh, I knew a lot about basketball overall, but really the finer details of building my philosophy, I wasn't so strong. So what I decided to do was is figure out who I wanted to be as a basketball coach, what I wanted to be about, what I wanted my program to be about. So for me, my biggest thing is notes, taking notes on everything. If you don't have a notepad next to you every, everywhere you go, uh, well, you do in your phone, but if you don't have one everywhere you, you are, uh, I think you're doing something wrong. Because what will happen is, and this happened to me a lot, I'll be thinking about something or hear something. If you don't have your pen and pad around, or at least your phone around, uh, I personally don't prefer to take notes in my phone, but some people do. Uh, if you don't have that, that around and be able to jot the note down and organize it, then you know you're 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 going to miss out on some really important things. So you, I think you have to have a notepad uh, next to you at all times or with you at all times via your phone or however else you're going to do it. Um, the second thing is, is after you take those notes, organizing those notes after you've kind of already jumbled everything down. So after I write everything down, I'll go through and kind of label them like. O, you know, press O, press D, O, you know, program philosophy, you know, whatever your note taking style is, and then take those notes and put them into Evernote or whatever note taking app. You I personally believe Evernote is the best one out there. You can organize it in notebooks. It's great. It's what I use to keep everything organized for me personally. And then fast draw, uh, use utilizing fast draw. So that way, if you see an offensive concept that you really like, if you don't, if you see that and you're like, I really like that for my offense and you maybe write it down first and then you convert it into fast draw, you can have notes in fast draw about it and you can just add to your philosophy in a simple organizational form. So that's kind of my personal thoughts on coaching philosophy. I want your guys thoughts on what your coaching philosophy is and how you have grown it. If you want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter at half court hoops, uh, YouTube, obviously here at half court hoops and the basketballplaybook.com instagram at the basketball playbook thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope i added some value to you if you took something away from this please let me know i'll catch you guys next time